Um, I've been asked to ask you this, and I think you've maybe already given the answer, but I'd like you to give it again. Can the ICRP model be used by governments to predict the consequences of a nuclear accident in terms of the, 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 for, the, the cancer you? I think basically no, because the uncertainties are too large. Now, I think the uncertainties we are talking about would be in the order of an order of magnitude, and I think you're talking about two orders of magnitude, uh, and therefore we have a difference. But I think uh, the one order of magnitude that I'm talking about is enough to say that it's not useful for that sort of prognosis. Well, what's the point of it then? <laughs> Well, you get an upper limit, of course. Uh, you, you think that your, your most likely uh, number of cases would be X, but 10 times X cannot be excluded. Okay, okay, okay. But then that means that it is useful. Just that assuming that you've got this range of... of um, I mean, I'm talking now formally, right? Would, would, would the government be formal, formally reasonable in employing the risk model of the ICRP to calculate the, the, the risks, you know, the cancer yield from some hypothetical uh, explosion at, at, at Barsbeck, say for example, even if they could then say, well, you know, uh, on the basis that it might be ten times that, that's possible, formally? Well, I, I think it would automatically be misused by both camps. Uh, and that therefore it, it is not, uh, you, you don't do it like that, you, you, you look at individual doses, the highest individual doses and calculate wh wh which is the sort of area where people should not live, which is the sort of area where they should have special means of quick evacuation in case of an emergency and so forth. But uh, the, this number exercise, uh, I, I think it's just silly. It, it, it serves no good purpose whether you're in your camp or in a, a, a pro-nuclear camp or, or an ICRP camp. Well, in this case, I'm in a political camp because, because uh, as you may know, I was the uh, science policy leader for the, so the, for the policy information network for the EU. And these are questions that the, that the, that the politicians want to know the answer to. Okay? When you decide to, to build new nuclear power stations or to repair old ones or, or, or you have any policy relating to nuclear, one of the th questions you have to ask yourself is what would happen if something went wrong? And, and, and therefore they need to know, they need to have some sort of model. And, and, and at the moment, they are using your model. Now, are you saying that they should be or they shouldn't be? It seems to me you're saying they shouldn't be using your model. They should be using... Uh, and no model at all, just guesswork or, or, or what? Well, I certainly wouldn't say that they should use your model because uh, that, that would mean... Uh, getting it, the right answer. No, it, it, it wouldn't. It would, in my opinion, be getting the wrong answer uh, and uh, a large expenditure which would not be uh, sensible and which could have been used to save lives in other respects. Okay, here's one more question. The draft ICRP, you remember you were saying you put it out on the internet as a draft for people to make comments. Now that draft actually uh, contained a statement which said that for some internal exposures, or I think for many internal exposures, the concept of absorbed dose was, was impossible, was invalid, was not valid. Now, uh, we would agree with that, of course and maybe you would as well, but it disappeared from the final report and it's not in the final report, why? Well, in fact, in the annex, uh, the biological annex, uh, there's a whole section which talks about the difficulties. Uh, I, I don't know exactly why the specific statement disappeared, but surely the person who reads these paragraphs in the biological annex uh, will, uh, will be able to see that there, there's a huge uncertainty. I don't think we're talking about huge uncertainty. We're talking about the inability to use absorbed dose for internal radionuclides. Yes. Well, as you've seen, the ICRP position is that it's possible to use it, albeit with large uncertainties. What do you call a large uncertainty? What do I call a large uncertainty? Well, uh, certainly two orders of magnitude is a very large uncertainty. So, so it could be an error by two orders of magnitude for certain internal exposures, though we agree. 
But I would hate for you to go home and say, Jack agreed with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to have an answer. <laughs> well, then the answer is, I don't agree with you. <laughs> but you just said two orders of magnitude. Yes, but uh, you can find, I'm sure you can find an exceptional case, a specific case, where there would actually be that sort of an uncertainty. Remember, it can also go in the other direction. And I'm sure that you can find, in most cases, uncertainties which are less than one order of magnitude, which I would find normal. If, if we look at the existing evidence, uh, I, I don't think you've got enough evidence to prove your case. The existing evidence is three orders of magnitude. If we take the, take the child leukemia clusters around nuclear sites, we're talking about three orders of magnitude. Well, that's what you're claiming on the basis of a handful of cases. I'm claiming it on the basis of the German study, the Older Marston study, the study at Sellafield, the study at Harwell, and, and, and numerous other studies. The only answer which you've given to me is that they found mild, min, minor excesses of leukemia in an extremely biased and rather stupid study done by Richard Dahl, in which they, they were looking at particular sites along the south coast of, of, of England where there was already uh, pollution, as a later study by uh, Alexander et al. showed associated with contamination of the sediment nearby. Yes, but ju just as an aside, let's not throw too much rotten tomatoes on Sir Richard. Uh, Sir Richard, just to let everybody know, was the person who took on the tobacco industry by proving that tobacco causes cancer. He was the person who proved that there is uh, a radiation risk even down to the lowest dose by looking at radiologists. He was the person who first told Annie Stewart that her early results didn't prove anything and then said to her, which she never liked, but he actually said to her very clearly, now that you've changed your, your analysis, I agree with you. And he, he stood up in public to say that. He is the person who's actually been awarded by the Swedish uh, Academy of Sciences their gold medal for radiation protection. I think you can't really say that he would be biased by the nuclear industry. I'm afraid I shocked up Sir Richard Dole to the Danish Committee for Scientific Dishonesty in 2004. So I've already said that, and I can back it up with all sorts of documentation too. Sir Richard Dole may have been doing some interesting stuff in the 1950s, but, but later on he became very much an advocate of the nuclear industry, and one of, was one of the main people behind the, these population mixing stuff. Uh, and he never believed that the, that the Sellafield leukemia cluster was caused by the radiation. And neither do I, <coughs> though surely for different reasons. Okay, well, let's, we have to open this up to the audience at some point, I think. But I just want to say about your ethics. Uh, I think that anyone who's interested in this, the, the, the ethical position of the European Committee on Radiation Risk is quite different from the ICRP. <coughs> the ICRP ethical situation is a very outdated system called utilitarianism, which was developed by Bentham and John Stuart Mill. And basically, it, with utilitarianism, you can have a slave society because the advantages of the many outweigh, you know, the advantages to the few. And so we don't believe, we believe in human rights. And we believe that you have the absolute human right to the integrity of your body and the decision to refuse to allow it to be contaminated with radioactivity. And that's a, that's a fundamental human right. It's a UN human right. It is indeed. However, societies also have rights and you always have the problem of balancing the individual versus society. And as you've seen, we also have a, a duty ethics uh, uh, which is expressed in the terms of dose limits and which we've strengthened with dose constraints. So uh, and you cannot escape some amount of utilitarianism. Okay, I think that I should now leave a bit of time to the audience and I've thrown all the tomatoes that I intend to throw. Well, we're talking about OJ, OJ emitters, yeah. yeah? Okay, well, we considered OJ emitters in cherry uh, and nothing ever came of it because nothing much came of cherry. But we consider, in the UCRR, we put a weighting on OJ emitters. So, so they carry a weighting. Well, this is what the UCRR does. The weighting factors that the, that the ICRP use, which are weighting factors for ionization density, which they add to, to alpha particles, we also add to OJ emitters, and they will get a separate weighting if the OJ emitting element binds to DNA, because obviously if you have bound to DNA and an OJ emission, then you're going to get twice the effect. 
So that is included in the ECR, along with a lot of other things that the ICRP don't include. 